learn how to turn Figma designs into code using AI. In this course, Anya Kubo will teach you how to speed up development using Locofy. She will demonstrate how you can easily create and deploy front-end code, starting with just a design. Locofy provided a grant to make this course possible. Hey everyone and welcome to this course in which I'm going to show you how to not only use an AI tool to convert your designs into production ready front end code, but also deploy it as a fully functional application. That's right, this is what the app is going to look like at the end, so a homestay rental app like Airbnb called Localhost. It will map out all of our property data as well as deal with authentication, or in other words, user signups and sign-ins. My name is Anya Kubo and I'm a software developer as well as course creator on Free CoCamp as well as on my own channel. And today I will also be your guide. This means that you'll be able to turn designs that you have created in Figma into code and make tweaks to the code too if you want. If you'd like to make some tweaks then naturally some coding knowledge will be required. But don't worry, I will walk you through this step by step and in fact here is an outline of exactly what we will be covering in this course. So first off, we're going to start with the introduction, followed by what exactly is Figma. Then we're going to have a look at the design, followed by Locofy Lightning and Loco AI. And that's when we'll start building out our app. We're then going to learn how to sync our app to GitHub, as well as create a database and create authentication by building out a backend. And finally, we're going to deploy our app. Okay, so great, I'm excited. In this course, the app we will be building will have React for the front end, Node.js for the backend, MongoDB for our database management, and Netlify to manually deploy the application. So let's go ahead and check out the design first. The tool we are gonna be using for our app design is a tool called Figma. It has a great reputation as one of the leaders in collaborative web design and allows users to come up with user interface, or UI designs as well as user experience or UX designs as a team in real time. And as a bonus, it has a free tier that we can use. So what are we waiting for? We are gonna first open up a design file all together so we can look at it first. Okay, so here is what Figma looks like. This is the website on figma.com and I do already have an account. So I have already signed up to this and all we're gonna do is just get the link in the video description. Let's go ahead and get it. This is what the full link should look like. So here it is, I've just pasted it and just hit enter. Okay, so this is the design. Don't worry, I'm gonna talk you through it in a bit. First up, however, let's open up this design right here. This design for a holiday home hosting website in Figma. So just go ahead and click open in Figma. And of course, it's gonna allow you to create an account if you don't have one already, but I already do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select continue with Google, which will give me this pop-up and I'm just gonna select the Google account I wanna sign in with. In this case, it's anya at codewithanya.com. And it should take me into Figma so that I can open this up. So open in Figma once I'm already signed in. Okay, so great. This is just the cover for the Figma file, so don't worry about that. What is interesting, however, is under getting started, we can see all the pages that make it up. So here is the home page, as you can see here, and this allows you to essentially filter through lots and lots of holiday homes based on where they are, the check-in date, the checkout date, and the number of guests staying. Okay, so this is what it will look like. This is the design file. And of course, if we click into one of these, so for example, if we clicked into Brightwood Cabins, the page or the property details page should look like this. So we have one image that's showing up as large as well as lots of lots of other images that we can click into, as well as the title of this property, which is Brightwood Cabins, the location of the property, the amount of reviews left on this property, as well as the average rating, which seems to be very high, it's five stars. You also have the ability to like this or not, as well as a description of the property, as well as, of course, how much it is to stay here per night, as well as some analytics on best time to book. Of course, we also have the option to actually book the property, as well as have some information about who this is hosted by. 
about this home here, well, we have a lot more information about it, as well as the amenities that are applicable to this property. And of course, if we select here, we will be able to see more. What's great about this is that you also have a map based on the coordinates or the longitude and latitude of the property, as well as some weather information about your stay. What is also cool is that you can see reviews that users have left, as well as similar stays in the local host website. We will also add a sign up page, which allow you to sign up by asking you for an email address, a password, and a way to confirm the password just to make sure you haven't made any errors. Or you can sign up with Google, Facebook, or Apple. And of course, this is the sign up page. We also need a way to log in, which just requires the email address and the password. So wonderful, these are the design files. If you haven't used Figma before, then please go ahead and just familiarize yourself with it a little bit more before moving on. Okay, so it's all very useful. If you look in the drop downs here, the header is split as a component, the hero container, and if you keep going into these, it will break them down even further. Wonderful, let's move on. Okay, now that we have walked through the design of our app, we are going to start using a Figma plugin. This plugin is called the Locify plugin and will allow us to utilize something called Locify Lightning that will essentially convert this Figma design to high quality production ready front end code in just one step. Locify Lightning is powered by Loco AI that leverages their in house large design models trained on millions of designs and web apps. It is also important to note here that while you might be following along with exactly what I do, the AI might have generated something slightly different for you. So just keep that in mind while watching this tutorial and let's have a look at the quality of this code that got generated for me now. Okay, so first things first, we're just gonna sign up to locify.ai. We're gonna try for free. So please go ahead and click on this button right here. We're just going to sign up to a free version. So this free trial can be extended every three weeks. So just keep that in mind. I'm just gonna go ahead and continue and sign in with Google. So this should bring up this Google pop-up in which I am just gonna select my Google account in order to share this information with locify.ai and to log in. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. And great, I'm gonna to choose to have my name as this is a default. Please feel free to use whatever username you wish and hit enter. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and select which one describes me most. I'm gonna go ahead and select founder and I'm gonna go ahead and put full stack developer. So just choose the same as we are gonna be building a full stack application or choose something that is more suited to you if you want the prompts to kind of be catered to you as well. I'm gonna go ahead and put startup and we can go ahead and put our company name if we want. I'm just gonna put code with ania.com and hit next. Again, you're just gonna be asked to answer a few questions here. And then the design tool that we're gonna to use today is gonna to be Figma. So I'm just gonna select that option and select next. We can also choose the frameworks that we want to use. And today we are gonna be choosing React as that is what we're gonna be using for the front end. So please go ahead and select the same and just go ahead and click next. Great, so we're all signed up. Now let's go ahead and get the Figma plugin. So just go ahead and select that. And this should open up in Figma now. So if you don't have a Figma account, please go ahead and sign up. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this button right here and continue to sign into my Figma account once again, just with my Google account. Okay, great. I'm gonna select continue and wonderful. So we are now in Figma, as you could see by the URL, and we are adding the Locify Lightning plugin to Figma. So in order to add this plugin to Figma, of course we are on figma.com at the moment, I'm just gonna choose open in, 
And because we already are signed into Figma, it should come up with all my Figma projects, of which one is the localhost website. So I can choose to select that and it will essentially open up my localhost website once more and then show the plugin. So I can choose to select run here and then that will run the Locofy Lightning plugin on this design. So you could have done it that way or if you're also new to Figma, another way to add plugins is by selecting the plugin from here and then you can manage plugins or for me, I already have it here. It's Locofy Lightning as a recent plugin and it should take you to this pop-up as well. Great. Now, before clicking Let's Go, we actually need to select the files that we want to convert into code. So in order to do this, I'm just going to select Getting Started once more. And let's just select all of these. OK, so all of these four pages. And now let's get up the plugin again. So this one right here. And let's go through the steps. So let's go ahead and select Let's Go. And I'm happy to name this project on locofy.ai localhost website just so it's the same as this Figma file and we're going to make a web app. I'm going to select React for the framework. I'm going to keep this as it is. We can change this later. So I'm going to choose TypeScript. We're also going to have CSS variables. The style is going to be CSS modules. Units, we're going to have pixels over rem. I'm fine with Pascal case. And we are also going to choose material UI, however, just because this will allow us to have optimal preview and code conversion. So let's go ahead and select create. So now this is going to convert our designs to code. Make sure you've selected those four frames and hit let's go. So what exactly is happening here? Well, as it's scanning, there's a lot of stuff actually happening under the hood. There is a responsive design being created, and I'm going to show you this in a bit, as well as Locofy AI is automatically tagging interactive elements such as inputs and buttons so they can add some functionality to them. It's also creating reusable components, so just like you would in React, and also recommending human readable layers and class names to make your life easier. Now, it's important to remember that AI is never perfect, and there can be moments when it doesn't get everything 100% as you would like. Locofy Lightning has a feature that lets you review all AI decisions and change them to make some fixes. This would include things such as tweaking responsiveness for the header or the scroll and so on. And here we go. So this is looking great. We have the code for our pages. So first things first, I just want to show you that this code is in fact responsive. We of course have the default of what this looks like on a web browser or a smaller web browser in which there's three properties showing an even smaller one like this. And then we have more, so perhaps a tablet like so, in which there's only two, or a mobile phone in which it looks like this. This is looking cool. So let's go back to the default. That is, in fact, responsive. And if you want to view it in different responsiveness, you can be way more specific by changing it here. What is also cool is, like I mentioned, that the inputs, so all the input and buttons, have been given functionality. So by this, I mean I can actually select a date and it will be shown here. And even the select input has been generated to fit the design of this website. So this is looking pretty cool. OK. And of course, if we click into one of these as well, that will work and take us to the correct page. So that is also amazing that it's figured that out. Great. And let's go back to our home page. So that's it for the responsiveness. And what is also great is the code and its readability. So I think the class names that have been chosen are pretty good. I, I would have chosen the same, so I'm pretty happy with that. And of course, just like in React, all the components have been split out. So we have a lot in here. We have the home page, which is composed of these different components, such as the header component, the hero container, the search section header, and the listing items onto which data will eventually be mapped out. 
at the moment that we don't have any data in here so we've created a reusable component or to be specific the AI has created a reusable component which has been reused many times here with data fed in which we can later map out if we connect it to a database okay so that is an example of a reusable component in action wonderful of course if you like to see the code in full you do have this button right here where you can focus on it if you would like one thing I also did mention is that we can actually change the settings of this project later on. So as you can see, I chose to use CSS variables and I chose to use CSS modules. But if I just wanted CSS and I wanted JavaScript, then that can be applied too. And as you will see, that's now changed. So there you go. It's really up to you and whatever you're comfortable with. And the best part is that you can change it later on and those changes will be reflected in the code. So as you can see here, this has also been changed. Great. And the TypeScript has been removed. And we just have JavaScript code right here. And the file names have also been changed. So we used to have TSX and now we have JS. Fantastic. Now, this code has been generated because Locofy has been trained on hundreds and hundreds of designs. But you know, sometimes maybe something isn't quite like you'd like it. Don't worry about that because we can change it. So on here, so just to the right hand side, if you scroll down, we can actually review Loco AI's decisions. So everything that's happened, so the design optimizer, the tagging, the responsiveness as well as styling, the interactions of the inputs, the layer names and the code components and props can all be reviewed. So I'm going to show you an example of how to do this now. And of course, once you learn how to do this, you can then apply this to anything you want. So I'm just going to actually minimize this code and let's say that we are not happy with how this looks when the screen is 1060 pixels by 665. So as you will see, perhaps you want the images to, you know, go all the way to the sides, not kind of be stuck in the middle. So I'm going to show you how to do this now. So let's review the responsiveness and then under here, in the stays section under homes. So let's go ahead and select listing items. So this one right here, and you can select edit. And then all I would do, so these are the CSS rules that have already been applied and I can add some advanced CSS properties. And this is really allow me to use my CSS knowledge as a developer. I'm going to apply flex one to this and save and done. So now you will see that it is stretching to fit the whole thing. And I just need to apply that to all the items here too. So let's go ahead and add flex one, save and done. And that should now be stretching out evenly and just carry on doing this for all of them as well. So that is something you can do. That is just a very simple example. And you will see how this row is now nicely stretching out to this whole container, whereas this row, which has not been given the flex one CSS property is as it was before. I'm just going to quickly apply this to all of these now as well. So they all have these same CSS attributes and they all stretch out. Okay. Of course, there's so many things you can do in here. This is just one of the things that can be applied. You don't even have to have advanced CSS properties. You can play around with stuff that's already there. And wonderful. So now this is looking so, so good. I'm happy with this. An option to do a bulk update on all these components will be released soon. So keep an eye out for that. Now, another thing you can do is review the tagging. And I'm going to show you what this means for this. I'm actually going to go ahead and head over to the sign up page. So this is our sign up page and you can review the tagging. You can actually just select one of these right here. So maybe the one with the password. So let's go ahead and go into the inputs right here. So here is the one for the password. And if I edit it, I can edit the properties. 
So at the moment, the password input it has a type of text, but we can be much more specific. We can give it the type of password. And for those of you who are familiar with the input type password, it just means that this will be treated as a password input instead of just a normal text input. So that is something you can do. And there's a lot of other stuff you can select as well, such as making this required. Great. So at the moment, without this changes, the password, well, if I type, you can see it. But if we added the type of password, then if you save this and type in here, it will show up as dots because the input with the type of password will have the text show up as dots as opposed to if the input had the type of text. Great. Let's go ahead and do the same for confirm password. So edit properties, scroll down here, change the type to password once more, and then also make this required. Let's just go ahead and select done. Another thing you can do is add your own custom code or just simply notes to a software engineer in order to, you know, make suggestions about what other code should be added. So for this, let's go ahead and go back to the homepage. Say we wanted to essentially make this button show more of these cards. So we would need to add some third functionality to this, right? Well, if I select edit and then select the button, I can go ahead and select actions and interactions, add an action. And here is where you can write your own code or you can simply add a comment to it. So we can go ahead and put Please show more list items on click of this button. And this note will be added essentially to the on click action of this button. So that is something that we can do, or we can select from these pre made on click actions above. And let's click done. So now if we go to the code, I'm just going to move this up a little bit. And of course, this is on the home page. If we go down here and find the button, so on show more button click, and then find that function up here that has been added. So let's go and find it you will see on show more button on click that to do has been added. So that is exactly what we wrote. That is a pretty cool way to essentially leave notes for engineers. If you're not maybe aware of how to code or where this should go exactly. Cool. Okay. So let's go back to preview. So now let's talk about layer names. So if I go ahead and select review, you will see what the Figma layer name was called as well as the recommended layer name that was generated. So I'm quite happy with these. Of course, error handler is much more clear than frame 98. Data combine is much more clear than frame 44. But of course, if you want to edit it, then you are more than welcome to. You can just replace it just like that. I'm not going to do it, but if you need to do it, then that is where you would go. Okay. So under preview and then just select the layer names and then edit the one you want and click done. Great. Now, one more thing I just want to show you. So because we will be hooking this up to a backend and we will be mapping out lots of data onto components, such as these reusable components right here, we also might want to review what props these reusable components take or any of the components in fact. So I can go ahead and review this and I can select the listing item, for example. So you will see here the listing item. There's 16 instances of it. So these are the listing items once more, just as a refresher. And it takes 13 props. So let's go ahead and have a look at this. So the first instance of it. So this one right here. Now you might not want to take all these props because I would imagine some of these stay the same. So for example, 
here you can see the prop name listing image. Well, that would be unique, so that would be a prop fed in. The listing title would be unique, listing subtitle also unique, rating 4.9, and price would be unique also. So these you'd want to keep the same, but if you didn't want one, so for example, if the heart icon was fed in, well, the heart icon is the same on all of these, so we would be able to delete that simply by removing the prop. However, the AI did a really good job here. I'm really happy with these props, so I don't want to change a thing. I'm going to keep this as it is. Great. When it comes to the style props, I don't really want to feed these in because I'd want them to all be exactly the same. So, for example, I could just go ahead and delete all of these and go ahead and click Save. So now only seven props are being added to these components. And let's go ahead and click Done. This is looking good. Now that we have the UI of our app built, let's continue making our app an actual usable product. In order to build upon the code generated, we will need to sync the code to the Logify Builder. Logify Builder is a platform that enables you to modify your code settings, create components, and bind data before integrating it into your CI or CD pipelines, as well as a bunch of other stuff that we will be exploring together now. Okay, so I think we've explored the preview, which by the way is running on live code that Logify Lightning generated. I think it's now time to have a look at the Logify Builder in order to build out this app even more. Okay, so in order to sync to the builder, we're just going to select continue in builder and make sure that we have all selected frames. So select all the frames. So there you go. And just go ahead and select sync to build. So now the syncing is in progress. Once we have the builder up, I'm going to show you the live shareable prototype feature. I'm also going to show you the auto components and props, the code configuration, and then we're going to sync this code to our GitHub in order to actually run the project. And then we'll go back and add state variables and data binding in order to flesh it out further. And great, let's go ahead and do it. So amazing. Here we are back on Locify AI this time, and here we see our code. Once again, if you select on a component, such as the header content right here, the code will show up for us. So as you can see here, here are all the layers that make up our app, or in other words, you can see here by the little icons that this essentially is a component. And then here we have all the elements that make it up. So here we go, here's a component, here's another one, and here is another one. And you can deep dive into as many of these as you wish. What is also great is that if you select on Locify Components, this will make it easy to link up this code to an app like Storybook, for example, which lets you manage all the components in an external place. Great, and you can see what these components look like once again in a default, in a smaller screen and so on, and in a mobile screen as well. So as you can see here, I've just selected the header, or you can just select the footer, or you can just select the details card, as you can see here. Wonderful. I'm just going to select on homepage again. Now, you can also create components and props. I'm just going to go back to all settings to show you where I found this. So under settings, you will see all of these right here. Code components and props will allow you to essentially create your own components, ones that have not been generated by the AI, and will also allow you to add your own props as well. Okay, so here you can view the current code components and props. So for example, here I've selected the header on the home page, the header on the property details, and you can see what it looks like on all the pages. Or once again, if you want to create your own, just under make your own component, you would select create after selecting a layer that you want to work on. So for example, say you want to do this in the frame, here is the frame, you would select create component, name the component and so on. Wonderful. I'm just going to go back to all settings. One other thing you can do is data binding. This will allow you to bind data to UI elements using state variables. 
You can bind directly to layers, components, props, or set up database rendering for repeated components. You can also configure your code, in which you configure your framework settings and screen settings before exporting your code. And of course, we also have the sync, export, and deploy, which allow you to sync to GitHub, as we will be doing in a bit, as well as deploy to things such as Netlify or Vassal. So as you can see here, the Locify Builder does offer a lot. We can also actually view the prototype. So if I select view prototype, this essentially is what it would look like once you have actually deployed it. So you can see it in all its different stages, as in its responsive stages, just right here. And you can, of course, share it. So if I click share prototype, you can select which screen to share. So I can go ahead and select one. Home page is the one I'm going to choose. And you can copy the link or you can send the link via email, in which you just have to put an email address in here and send that link over. So if you copy this URL and just paste it, you can see what this website will look like once it is deployed. And ta-da! So this is looking so, so good. I'm happy with this. Wonderful. And of course, we can click into each one of these to get a preview too. I'm just going to close that down for now. So now let's go back to editing in Builder. So now that we've seen the actual prototype that will be going live, I'm going to also talk to you a little bit about the code components that we saw before. So in order to actually change these and edit them, once again, you would select view here and you can see all your components. There's 15 existing components on the home page. And of course, you can edit them. So for example, perhaps you don't really like what one of these is called. Let's go ahead and say that you don't like the name of the frame component. You think this is too generic. Just go ahead and select the frame component. This will, of course, highlight the component that you're talking about and you can edit it. So you can call it whatever you wish. Maybe I want to call this the property display. OK, and you can save it. I'm not going to do this now, but it's good to know you can. Now, this doesn't have any props, but if you wanted to change the props instead, so let's go ahead and check this out. We know that the listing item has props, so let's go ahead and select that. And you can, of course, rename them here. Once again, you'd select edit. You can rename them. You could delete them. So you can really do whatever you want. You saw us editing this in Figma as well, so you could do it here too. Here, however, you do also have the data type that has been applied, which you can either choose to put in or leave it as it is. Once again, it's important to highlight that this will be synced to Locofy components, the same thing that I showed you that is applicable for when working with storybooks. Great, let's move on. So wonderful, let's go back to all settings. We've viewed code components. We've already discussed that you can create new components and pass through props. We've talked about binding data and configuring code, which once again is just the same as what you had in Figma that allows you to change these settings and change whatever you use in your code. So at the moment, we have JavaScript selected, CSS, we've chosen pixels, and we have Pascal case for file naming. Great, I'm just gonna keep that as it is. So, wonderful. And let's go back to settings. So finally, let's go ahead and sync this, right? So I'm gonna select sync, and we're going to sync our project with GitHub. Of course, there are other things you can do. You can, of course, pull this code into VS Code. So there's a VS Code extension for this if you wanna explore that. Or you can choose to deploy this code as it is to Netlify or Vassal. So those are two options as well. We're not going to be doing that here today from here because we want to actually extend this code. And in order to do that, we're going to sync this project to our GitHub's account so we can add to it as well. So let's go ahead and select sync project. We're of course going to have to connect to our GitHub account. So please go ahead and do the same. I'm just going to install and authorize Logify.ai. So click install and authorize. And then I'm just going to put in my authentication code and then it's going to redirect me like so. So great, that connection is now done. We're going to create a new repository. Let's go ahead and call this Locofy app. 
and then I'm just going to confirm a repo and branch. So wonderful, of course, this is going to take a while to do its thing. I'm going to push to GitHub. We can, of course, choose to review files or, you know, select the ones we want and select the ones we don't want, but I want all of them. So let's go ahead and push that to GitHub. So that is now doing its thing. Of course, this might take a while. So just come back when this is done. Okay, and great. So that has been done. You can, of course, choose to go to the repository to check it out. So once again, this is on my GitHub now. It's called Logify app. And here is the code along with the readme. So amazing. I'm just going to go back here and select done. And now let's actually get this code onto our computer. So I'm going to get this code. I'm going to copy this. I'm of course going to get up my terminal. So here we are. I'm just going to go into a folder where I like to keep all my projects using the CD command on a Mac. And I'm just going to clone this. So git clone, paste that URL and hit enter. So now that's moving that repository, it's cloning it to be precise onto my computer in a folder called development that lives on my laptop. Okay, so once again, we're just going to wait for this to do its thing. Okay, and that is now done. So now let's go into Locify app. So I've just used CD to go into that app. And now we need to install all the dependencies using the command npmi. So wait for that to do its thing. It's just going to install all the dependencies that are in the project. And then we're going to start it. And we're going to make it run on localhost 3000. So once again, we're just waiting for this to do its thing. And great. So those have all been installed. Now let's do npm run start. And that should start up our app on localhost 3000. So this should happen automatically. Okay, there we go. And we can see our app. And great. So this is looking so good. I'm just going to open up the code in VS Code. And this is what it should look like. So you have your components, your pages, your CSS files, and everything in here. Now, we want to be able to add some functionality, as we said, mainly to buttons like this one. So, for example, if we click here, I want to show more. So, for this, we're going to have to extract all the data that's coming into these reusable components so we can essentially map them out and add some more data to this. So what I'm going to do is let's just go ahead and make a JSON file just for us. Okay, just so we can essentially work with it. So I'm just going to create a state object JSON file. And this is going to be an array of 16 items. Okay, because here we have four times four. So 16. And I've actually already gone ahead and done this. So what I've done is gone into the pages, the home page, and on each of these, I just extracted this data right here. Okay, the listing image, the listing title, the listing subtitle, rating price, best on show, and so on. Okay, and I've essentially done this. So please go ahead and do the same. It might take a while. You have to do it for all 16 of these. Okay, of which you can only click on the first one for demo purposes at the moment. So don't put that on here. Okay, just leave that one out. Leave out the on click. Once again, to show this, if we click on the first one, you'll be able to go into details about it as we saw in the preview. But this won't work on any of the other ones at the moment. Okay, now let's go back to the builder. I'm going to show you how to bind some data. So on the home page, what you want to make sure is you have the parent of all the listing items. So here it's called homes. You're going to now make a component. So make sure that is selected once more. Go back to settings and create a component. Make component. Let's just call this card list and click create. And now once this has been created, we need to create a state variable. Make sure the data type is an array. Let's just call this card state. And we're going to have to paste in all of the content of this state object JSON into there. So just copy it. And I'm just going to paste this all in like so. However, making sure for now that we need to have HTTP localhost 
3000 at the front. So just make sure to add local host 3000, just like I have. And you're going to have to do that to every single one. So please just go ahead and take your time in doing this. Do it as slowly as you don't really want to make any errors. So maybe do it a little bit slower than I am, but just make sure to have that at the beginning of every single image in here. And of course, you have to have localhost 3000 running. Otherwise, those images will not show up. So once again, that's all I am doing. Just filling that in. And then let's hit save. So now let's bind this. So all I'm going to do is select bind data. I'm going to add the plus sign. I'm just going to select the first item, click repeat, and the data source is selected. And if you just look down here, you will see all the props along with their values already populated for me. So this is looking good. I'm just going to hit save. And great. So now that has been binded, you will see all those images showing up. So now all that data has been binded. And if you look in here, we have actually created another state. So here, this piece of code is new, the const card state, set card state, use state. And we just pass through that whole array with objects into here. So that's the starting state of the app. And that's being mapped out now onto the listing item. So now that we've done that, we can also sync this to GitHub so that the latest changes reflect in our code. So all we're going to do is select sync, sync project. You can choose an existing branch or create a new branch. Confirm repo and branch. And here you'll see the files that have been changed. It's the card list and the card list CSS. And you can push to GitHub. Okay, great. And now let's click done. And of course, now we need to pull in those changes because this code will be updated. As you will see here, one minute ago, okay, we have obviously updated something in here. We know what it is. And now let's pull that in. So I'm just going to get up my terminal again. I'm going to stop this from running. I'm going to do git pull so we can pull in those changes and we will see them in here. Okay, so we don't actually need this state object JSON file anymore because if we now look in components, and look at the new component that has been created. So here we have the card list. You will see that state, so use state, along with that array, with all the images, so all the objects that represent the images in here, that is being mapped out onto one listing item. Great. This is looking so, so good. I'm happy with this. So now maybe let's hide the last four and apply the logic for the show more button. First off, however, let's just make sure this is running. So do npm run start in order to start the app. Okay, so that is running. And now let's go back to the code. Now in order to show more items, so let's go ahead and find pages home page. I'm just going to minimize this. Here's the on show more button. And if we click on this button, we essentially want to affect something in the card list. So let's go ahead and import use state in here. And I'm just going to do it super simple. Okay. Um, const show in or show all set show all and use state. Well, we're going to start off with this being false as so we're not showing all. So make sure that that is done. And in here, I'm just going to do this very basic. If show all is not true, then we're going to use set show all to be true. Okay. Else we're just going to do set show all to be false. Uh, this is just a super basic example of how to make things dynamic, okay? So what we want to do now is send show all. So pass this through onto the card list. So this value is either true or false, depending on if we've clicked the button and how many times we click that button. So now let's go to the card list. So go to definition. I'm just going to pass through show all. And I'm going to essentially get the card state. So let's go ahead and do this here, perhaps. Const cropped card state equals, 
and if show all is true, well, we're just going to get the card state and assign it to quote card state. Otherwise, we're going to get the card state and we're just going to bring back the first 12 items. Okay, so we're going to use slice for this. So now we're going to get the cropped card state and instead of the card state, we're going to map the cropped card state. So this is just very basic, of course, I just want to show you this works. Um, this is on the assumption that we only are ever going to have 16 cards. Okay, so at the moment, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 because we essentially chopped four off. But if we show more, there's 16. Now, a cool way to take this project further would, of course, be to, you know, be like show less where you reverse this. But that is something you can do in your own time. I just wanted to show you this as a quick demo of how you can essentially add functionality to buttons on your site. Great. Now let's get to linking this up to a database. And for that, we're going to have to build out a Node.js backend. So let's get back to doing this. One thing I'm also going to do is perhaps just hide the show more button, you know, because if show all is true, we don't really want to show it as well. Okay, so I've just wrap that in there. And it just means that that won't be visible once you show them all. Cool. So now let's go back here. I'm just going to shut these down and then let's make a Node.js backend. So all I'm going to do is simply, I'm just going to get up my terminal again and I'm going to, maybe let's stop this for now because we're going to have to import some packages. So first off, we're just going to, I'm going to create index.js file on the second level as my package JSON. So index.js and this is going to be our backend essentially. So the things we're going to have to do is define a port. I'm going to define it as port 8000. We're going to need express. So const express requires the package express. We're also going to need cores. So require cores to get rid of any pesky cores messages. And then we're going to listen out for changes on here as well. So we're going to get Express after we've installed the package. It's released all of its wonderfulness into Express. We're going to call it to release it even further and save it under the const app. So now this will have all the methods and properties that come with the Express package. So what I'm going to do is do app use and then chorus and then call it like so, but also app listen to listen to out any changes on the port. So console log listening to port and then we could just do the port name great so now let's go ahead and install those packages so making sure you are in the app npmi express and also course i'm also going to use secret variables so dot env is another package that we're going to need and hit enter okay so that is now doing its thing and wonderful. So now let's run the back end and the front end. So all I'm going to do is go down here. This is start the front end. So I'm going to change that start script. And then let's also do start back end like so. And we're going to do no demon to listen out for constant changes on the index.js file. So node one is another package. Like I said, it's going to listen out for constant changes. So it's one we're going to have to install npmi node one and wait for that to do its thing. Of course, please also make sure that all the packages that I've installed are these versions, because if you're watching this in the future and something doesn't work, it could be down to the package version that you are using. So just revert back to these. Great. So now let's start off front end. So npm start front end and let's also start our back end. So once again, we're going to go back here. I'm going to create a new tab and do npm run start back end this time. Okay, so this will start our back end on local host 8000. Okay, so let's go back here. And if you look in the terminal, listening to port 8000, listening to port 8000. This is looking great. Make sure to pass the port through in here as well as the callback function. 
So now perhaps let's work on something else. I'm going to essentially work on signing up and signing in. So once again, this is just one feature of this website. This would be way too long to finish out everything from the whole website, but I just want to give you a taster of working with a database for this project. So let's go ahead and find the sign in page. So we can navigate to the sign up page simply by going to localhost forward slash sign up page. So let's go ahead and work on signing up first before working on signing in. Okay, so I'm just going to head over to MongoDB, which is going to be my database of choice. And I'm just going to choose to sign in. Okay, and if you haven't signed up already, please go ahead and do so now. So I'm just going to choose to sign in with Google. And great. So here is my organization called Anya's Organization. And I'm just going to create a project. So let's go ahead and select new project here. And this project, well, you can call it whatever you wish. I'm going to call it Locofy Database. Okay, so Locofy DB. And then I'm just going to go ahead and select next. So I'm going to give myself the permission. So let's go ahead and create this project. Great. Now I'm going to create a deployment. So go ahead and select that button and let's select the free version. Uh, I'm going to leave as cluster zero. In fact, I'm going to leave all of these as they are. So just the default settings and I'm going to create a deployment. Wonderful. So let's go ahead and create my database user. So that password and username have been saved and we're just going to get rid of my IP address so that anyone can access this. So first off, however, we're going to choose a connection way. Uh, we can choose any of these. I'm going to choose the driver. So let's go ahead and install MongoDB. So once again, I'm just going to perhaps open a new tab and do npm install mongodb so that it's installed into this project and next we're going to have to have a connection string so just go ahead and copy that because we're going to have to use it okay so let's review those steps there we are let's just change the ip access so i'm just going to delete my ip address from here so that anyone has access to this so i'm going to add an ip address this time and allow access from anywhere and click confirm great so that is now doing its thing and here under database users if you have forgotten your password you can edit here and then edit password and auto regenerate a secret password i'm just going to show you mine copy it and keep it somewhere safe. Okay, and update user. Wonderful. So now let's shut this down for now and continue with this. At the moment, I'm done. So I'm just going to click done on that. And great. So that is now done. Let's go ahead and look at cluster zero. So just go ahead and click on cluster zero. And at the moment, it's just loading all our new data sets to cluster zero. In the meantime, let's go ahead and connect our data with Node.js and JavaScript. So let's go back here, okay, to the index.js file. I'm just going to remove that for now. And we're going to require the Mongo client from MongoDB. We're also going to do app use while we are here and pass through express JSON so that we can work with JSON being passed from the front end to the back end and so on. Now, we're also going to have to define a URI, and that is going to be essentially the URL that we saw here. So if you click connect again and click through all of these, just copy that one right here again and go back to your code and paste it like so. But of course, in quotation marks, as I have done right here, and just put in your password. Your password can, of course, be stored on the back end, or you could just put this whole URI in a .env file to keep this secure. So perhaps let's do that. I'm just going to create a new file, a .env file, and then we can put URI. Let's take all of this right here, process env 
URI, making sure to spell it exactly the same as you did here. I'm just going to paste that. We don't need it in quotes as that is a string already. And then just put in your password here. So this is my password. Please go ahead and get your own. We are not done yet, however, because we're going to have to put our database name here, but we actually need to find out what that is first. Great. So now let's go back here. So we've got our UI. Next, we're going to get the client. So get the client that we just got from Mongo client. So let's just get Mongo client instead and pass through the URI and we should now be connected. We are also going to have to await the client connect just like that. Now, let's go ahead and actually put this in a function, right? So perhaps let's write our first root. Let's say that we want to sign up. So this is going to be for signing up. I'm going to do app post and then we're going to go to sign up like so. There's going to be an async function request response just like that. And then we're going to essentially get the email and password from the front end. So const email password. This is going to be from the front end. I'm going to attach it to the body of the request. We're then going to have to essentially salt the password. So const salt equals bcrypt. So bcrypt is a package we're going to use in order to essentially uh, add some salt to our password before we hash it. Okay, so I do have plenty of tutorials where I go into this in a lot more detail. So please check out my channel for this. For now, I'm not going to go into a deep dive onto the bcrypt package because I'm going to assume you already have knowledge on it. So hash sync and then we're going to pass through the password along with the salt. So let's go ahead and install that package, right? So let's go ahead and do it, npi bcrypt. Let's also maybe go ahead and add JSON web token while we are here. npmi JSON web token, just like so. Okay, so once we have that hashed password, the email we're just going to keep as normal in our database. That is fine. It's just the password that we are worried about. I'm just going to try something and catch any errors. So console error, the error. So we can read it in our backend. So what do we want to do? Well, we want to sign, send over this and this to our MongoDB database, right? So perhaps also let's just get this in here. I'm going to put it up here and we can add a finally statement too. So there's our catch statement. Finally, we're going to also await client close. And we're going to close that connection. For now, let's just list our databases as we said. So let's head over to cluster zero. So browse this collection. And there's going to be some sample data in here. We don't really want this. So I'm just going to delete it. Sample mflix drop this. Okay, and let's add our own data. So let's just call this localify data. The collection name for this is going to be user. And then I'm happy with that. So let's go ahead and click create. Okay, so there we go. There's users. And Let's go ahead and insert a document. So you could do it this way or you could do it as uh, JSON. It really is up to you. So, so far we have an ID. Let's go ahead and add another field. This is going to be email. And let's go ahead and for now, I'm just going to put in Anya at test.com. And then let's also put in a hashed password. So let's hash a password. Okay, obviously this is going to be very fake. Uh, let's say my password was password, the cost factor is 10, so that's like the salt generate hash. Okay, I'm just going to copy this for now. So I'm just going to paste that in, the password, like so. In fact, maybe let's put hashed password, just so it's really obvious, and insert. 
So now that we have something in our database, that is good. That's kind of the format that we're going to apply to everything else. So let's try send this over. Of course, we do need to link this up to the front end. So let's find where our form is. So sign up page. Here we go. And then let's scroll down here. Here's the form. Here's the text field. So we're going to have to save this to state. We've got the email address. So let's go ahead and get the values from these. So let's go ahead and add a value here. That's just going to be the email. And let's find it for the password as well. So value password. And let's save it to state. So use state. And here I'm going to save it. So const email set email use state and we'll start off with this just being an empty string and let's do the same for the password so password set password use state and we'll have it as that we should also probably have the confirm password right confirm password set confirm password because we want to make sure that these match so use state like this uh, and then let's find the confirmed password so it's the second one in here confirm password that's right value confirm password and then on change we're going to do set confirm password and pass through the e target value, pass through the event. And we're going to do the same for all of these. So let's find the on change for the other one. So here is the text field. Set password this time. And of course, the set email. So let's do set email. OK, and then we only really want to be able to sign up if password and confirm password are the same, right? So let's find that button that allows us to do this. Here is a button. Let's add an on click to it. On click. And obviously, we're going to maybe write a function to sign up. So let's define it up here. Const sign up. Just like so, but only if password and confirm password match. Do we do something? OK, great. So make sure this is an async function. OK, we're also going to e prevent default. So we don't want the whole page to reload. And then what we're going to do is await fetch. And we're going to essentially here we're going to have a URL. So whatever the server URL is going to be. So I'm going to do process env react app server URL. And then we're going to have the endpoint, which is sign up. OK, so we're going to await that, but also we're going to have to actually send through a bunch of other stuff, too. So we're going to make an object. Uh, this method is going to be a post method. As we saw, we're posting information headers. We're going to pass through as well. We're going to do content type application. JSON and the body. Well, we know that we're going to pass through a few things. We're going to pass them through JSON stringify. And we're going to pass through the email and the password. OK, so that's all we're going to send. And once that is done its thing, let's save this as the response. Let's get the response just so we can see what is going on. 
Let's get it JSON. Let's await this const data because we're going to have to find out if this worked. And if it did, we're going to set some cookies, okay? So for now, I'm going to just console log out the data on the front end because E needs to be put here. So great, if we click on the sign up button, this should send it to the back end. Let's just go ahead and add the server app URL as well. So for now, I'm just going to go with this localhost 8000. But we will, of course, change that when we need. And great. Let's go back to the index.js page. So how are we going to insert a document now? So first off, however, I'm just going to move these things as well. So let's get the client. I'm just going to put that in here. We can delete this. I'm going to cut this out and put this in the try. So const database equals client db. And this is going to be locify data const users. It's going to be database collection users because that's what we called it. I'm just going to make this the same. And then const existing user equals await users find one. And then we're going to pass to the email. Okay, so we're looking by the email. This is kind of like the unique identifier. Now, if existing user already exists, then we want an error, right? So I'm going to return rest status 409 and send user already exists. Please log in. Okay, but that's only if that exists. Otherwise, I'm going to sanitize email, sanitize the email because we want to make sure that everything is lowercase and I'm going to get the email and just make it to lowercase. So to lowercase. Great. And once we've sanitized the email, let's actually put in the data, right? So const data equals uh, let's get a user ID. I'm going to actually generate that using UUID. And let's get an email, which is just the sanitized email, really. And let's get the password, which is now my hashed password. So hashed password here. Okay. And we don't want to save as password, do we? How do we save it here? We saved it as hashed password. So let's go ahead and do the same. Now, my user ID, well, I'm going to install another package for this, so npmi uuid. Okay, and now we're just going to get that package, const, we're going to get version 4 of it, so uuid v4, require package uuid. Okay, so now we can actually use this. So all I'm going to do is go down here and maybe let's do it up here. So just where we salt everything, I'm also going to generated user ID, call that so we can use this and that will essentially create a unique identifier for us. So that is the data that we are essentially going to send over. So this time I'm going to do const inserted user equals await users insert one and then pass through the data. Okay, great. One other thing we need to do is make a token. So const token equals JWT sign inserted user sanitized email and then expires in 60 multiplied by 24. So we gave an expiration time. 
And then we're just going to send this over. So res status 201 JSON. We're going to send over the token, the user ID, which is the generated user ID as well. So that's going to be sent over. So we can essentially store it and save it as a cookie. Make sure to spell sanitized email exactly the same here so we can get a token. This should be that they equal, by the way, not just that they exist. So make sure that is the same. One thing we also need to do here is just require the .env package and then add the config like so. And of course, we need to use the token. So const JWT equals require JSON web token. Just going to move that up here as well. So let's go ahead and require bcrypt const bcrypt equals require bcrypt. So cool. Let's give this a go. So let's head over here. Let's go back to here and let's go with Tony at test. Com. Let's put the password as password, password, and sign up. Okay, so that is good. And if we check in here, I'm just going to refresh. Amazing, Tony is signed up. So that is looking really, really good. I'm happy with this. So great, we are signing up Tony. And if we try to sign up again, it says user already exist right so that is something that comes back to us so let's go ahead and go here so we're sending that over but this is really just going to us so we can just console log this out instead so console log user already exists so that we know that you know a user already exists and we can use it so now let's go back here so of course, here we are posting that email and password. However, that's only if the password equals the confirmed password already. So that is looking good. And of course, if the user already exists, then we just get some text for us in the back end. I'm not going to work on, you know, displaying error messages that's outside the scope of what we're doing today. However, one thing that we have done, so let's go ahead and look at this, is we want to also save this to the cookies, right? So we are console logging out that data. So what we should be sending is the JSON of the token and the user ID. We can just do red status instead. And let's return out of this. So let's do Annie at test.com. One, two, three, one, two, three, sign up. Go check in here. Annie has been added. And of course, we get the token back and we get the user ID. So let's go ahead and save that as a cookie next. So let's go back here instead of console logging the data. So this is the data I need to get the data token and the data user ID. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just going to do set cookie email data email auth token data token and we can also do the user ID if we wish set cookie user ID data user ID. OK. Great. And then we're going to reload the window so that we don't see the sign up page anymore. So window location reload. Great. Now set cookie is done from another package. So I'm going to have to install npm react cookie just like so. And now we can use it up here. So import use cookies from react 
cookie. So great. So that's how you sign up. However, let's just say that we want to redirect to the login page if we are already signed up. However, now I'm just going to go head over to the app page where we show all the pages because we only want to show certain pages if the auth token exists. So let's go ahead and get that auth token now. And for this, we're going to once again import use cookies from React cookies, cookie even, okay? So what is it? Use cookies, React cookie, yeah, that's right. So now I can get the auth token from this page essentially. So let's go ahead and set those cookies here. So const cookies set cookie remove cookie then use cookie null and I'm just going to go ahead and copy this line and put it on the sign up page as well so right here so set cookie of course we're already using in the sign up page we're using it to set the auth token and now we're going to get the auth token so save this and we're going to go into the cookies to get that auth token so down here I can just get or define the auth token auth token by going into the cookies and getting the auth token. So however we saved it here, that's how we're getting it with dot notation there. So if the auth token exists, then we want to see the home page, right? And only if that exists, we also only want to see the property details if we have an auth token too. So make sure to wrap that like so. Uh, the sign up page, we don't need an auth token for that. And the sign in page. Well, I guess if the auth token exists, we don't really want to see the sign up page because we are already signed up. So if no auth token exists, this is the only page that we should be able to see. Great. So now we should be able to see all these pages, of course. However, first, let's actually save that auth token because we weren't doing that before. So let's go ahead and do it again, right? Let's go ahead and do danny at test.com now. Password, password, sign up. And this time, this should be saved. So let's go ahead and go to application and under cookies, local host, you should be able to see the auth token and the user ID. So there is an auth token at the moment. This is looking good, which means that we can see this. However, if I deleted this auth token, so let's go ahead and delete that and delete the user ID, we don't see this anymore. Great. So this is looking good. Now I have saved the all user ID to cookies. This is for the future if you want to, you know, be able to know which user is signed up. So I'll keep that there. However, this might be outside the scope of what we will be doing today, but I've left that in here if you need. So if you need to identify the user by their user ID for later. Okay, so this is looking great. Let's do the sign in page. So once again, I'm just going to wrap this in an auth token because if one exists, we don't really want to see the sign up page at all. So great, let's work on the sign in page now. So I'm just going to do that. And here's our sign in page. So here do we just want to be able to sign in, right? So let's go back here and let's write another root. So I'm just going to delete this for now. And let's work on signing in. So for this, I'm going to do app post. And let's do login just like that. It's going to be an async function. I'm going to do request response just like so. 
once again let's go ahead and do const client equals new mon go client i'm going to pass through the uri const email and then let's do password because that is important so i'm going to get that from the body so rec body we're going to try something and we're going to catch any errors we're going to console error the error and then finally we're also going to do something and that is the close the connection so we're going to do await client close okay and what we're going to try well we're going to await the connection so await client connect just like so let's define the database once more so client db and it is localify data now let's define the collection okay so const user as it is and we're going to go into the data base i'm going to get the collection of users okay and the user well we're going to define this we're going to await the users we're going to find one i'm going to do it by email as that is our unique identifier now const correct password we're also going to define test i'm going to await bcrypt and we're going to compare the passwords. We're going to pass through the password that we have from the front end. So whatever is being passed to the form and whatever the hashed password is that's attached to our user. So let's make sure to spell this exactly the same as we did here. Hash password is going to compare our password to this hash password. So that is something that Bcrypt can do. Again, I have a whole tutorial on this. So if you're interested, please check it out on my channel. Now, if user exists and the correct password exists, then we're going to get another token, right? So we need another auth token, token equals, and I'm just going to actually copy it from here. So let's copy that like so. However, this time we're just going to pass through the user and the email. Okay, because we don't need to sanitize it or anything like that because it's already been sanitized when it went into our database. Great. And then we're just going to do res status 201 JSON. And we're going to send over the token, the user ID, which is the user, user ID. So just like that, I'm going to spell it the same way. Otherwise, if that does not work, I'm just going to console log out just so we can see in the back end invalid credentials. We're not going to send any error messages or show them on the front end. It's outside the scope of this tutorial. Cool. So now let's get up our sign in page. So I'm just going to find it now so that we can essentially write the code for this. So once again, we're going to need react or use state because we're going to save the email and password. So const email set email use state empty string const password set password to make sure that is in brackets like so use state string and then we're going to find the text fields so the value of this is going to be well the email on change we're also going to change this so pass through e and we're going to do set email pass through the e target value each time it changes and let's just copy this because we're going to do the same for the password now so here it is, however, we're going to do password, set password, and then set that target value. Great. So now let's write the function. So const login is going to be my function. 
there we go and it's going to be an async function and this is going to be called when we press the button so let's find that button right so wherever we sign up i'm going to do an on click so here it is so on click log in so now let's define it, right? Here is my login button. And all I'm actually gonna do is go back to the sign up page. And we're just gonna copy all of this. So everything that's in sign up, okay? Just like so, paste it in here and just change a few things. So we don't need to really check if the passwords match because of course there's no checking of passwords in here, so just get rid of that. We're going to prevent this from reloading. We're going to await the response from log in this time. We're going to make this a post method. We're going to pass through email and password. We're going to await the data, and then we're going to, of course, set the cookies, the auth token and the user ID as well. And then we're going to reload the window. So let's check if this works. First off, however, we do need an E here as we are preventing the default. One other thing we need to do, of course, is because we use cookies in here is also import use cookies. So let's go ahead and do that here. And then, of course, we need to get this line of code. So for when we actually get the cookies and use the cookies and set the cookies, so I'm going to paste that in here as well. And great, let's give this a go. So I'm going to go with, let's have a look at here. Let's go with Annie. I'm just going to paste in Annie and our password is one, two, three and sign in. And great. So now we are logged in. This is looking good. And of course, we can't see this because, you know, we're signed up. So perhaps we need to do a redirect. So perhaps after this has done, Let's not reload the window. I'm just going to navigate to the dashboard. Okay, so let's try this again. Just going to delete this, delete this. Let's put Annie at test one, two, three, and then it should take me to the dashboard. Great. And let's do the same for the sign up page too. Okay. So instead of reloading the window, we just navigate to the dashboard once we are signed in. And of course, it would be nice to have a logout function as well where you remove the cookies. But again, I think this is fine for this tutorial. It's just a taster of what you can do. Some other things that I would recommend doing are, of course, adding a logout button, adding this data to the database itself, but implementing the filter feature. And there's a bunch more, but those are my top. Great. So I'm super happy with this. I'm just going to clean this up a bit by searching for any console logs. I want to keep that one. I'm going to keep that one. I'm going to keep that one as those are helpers for us. Otherwise, I think I'm quite happy with this. I'm just going to format this code a little bit better. So format document, just like so. I'm going to format the document for this one too, because I'm going to commit this to GitHub. Okay, so format document. Let's format this too. So now I'm just going to go ahead and add a dot git ignore to which I'm going to add dot env as well. So dot my dot env file. And now let's go ahead and commit every changes. So yes, I'm going to commit. Let's add sign up functionality added. You can also put log in to be precise, click here, save, and then we're going to pull and push commits. Okay, great. So now you will see that in Locify app, if you refresh, that has been added. So now let's go ahead and deploy this. So I'm just going to head over to Netlify. Okay, please feel free to use whatever you wish. And I'm going to go ahead and log in. I'm going to choose to log in with GitHub. I'm going to authorize Netlify and let's add a new site. So I'm going to import an existing project. I'm going to deploy with GitHub. And this is just going to essentially 
give permission to GitHub. So I'm going to authorize Netlify and let's search for it. So I'm going to go ahead and search for Locofy. And there we go. So now that you've found the repository, you can then do the next steps in order to deploy this app with Netlify. You will have to deploy the front end here, and then you also have to deploy the back end separately too. In order to do this, you will have to read the Netlify documentation. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, so we will leave you with the documentation here in order to go through the next steps. And please check out the support forums if you get stuck.